Hi everybody, my name is Liz Rivera. I'm the Gem State Medium. Welcome back. Okay, so today I wanted to tell you about a haunted location that I was called out to back in 2014 and how the research that I did on it ended up leading me back to the pandemic of 1918. I had a single mom contact me because she felt like her apartment was very active and um, she was a little bit concerned for her safety as well as her, her child. This um, apartment complex sat just out on the outskirts of Ammon, Idaho. As soon as I got to this haunted location and got out of my car and put my foot on the ground, um, it was instantaneously and I, that I saw people that were there. There, were, there was more than one ghost. It seemed like this entire apartment complex that I could tell seemed like it was active. Um, as I walked up to the door, it just kind of built from there. And I thought this is going to be really interesting. So I knocked. The first room I felt like I was led to was the child's room. Once I got in to the child's room, I didn't realize it at that very moment, but uh, I was standing next to the child's bed, which just happened to be a bunk bed. As I stood there, I was trying to take things in and I felt, you know, somebody kind of pull on my hair a little bit and I turn around and it kind of made me smile because it was another little boy um, who was in spirit and he was very playful and you know grabbing a hold of my hair it was kind of sweet what i realized was that that little boy had kind of found a friend in this woman's son that was there as i wandered around i got to one particular area and all of a sudden i could hear whispering and talking and I tried to hone in and listen just a little bit better uh, and, and try to see if I could hear what they were saying. I couldn't quite grasp the words that they were saying, but what I did realize was it was a small group of men and it was only men that I could hear. And as soon as I said that, it was instantly quiet and there was no more talk. It was like they realized I could hear them. So they just stopped talking altogether. After a minute, I, you know, realized I was not going to be picking up anything else from these men. They weren't going to talk. And so I stood up to go into another area to see what I could pick up and if there was more. And as soon as I did that, I felt as though somebody like, was standing in front of me, but gently brushed my face. And unlike the little boy who was playful in the, in the child's room, that was a little more unnerving because I knew it was one of the men. And that struck me as a little bit creepy. I also walked out into the, the living room area and just off the living room was a sliding glass door that looked out onto a very small, narrow balcony area, and it kind of overlooked a full field. And so as I stood there, I kind of opened up the door a little bit and leaned out, and um, there was a woman out there standing in this field. She had blonde hair, light, sandy, blonde hair. It was all put up in a bun, and neat, and yet it was very wind blown. She had a dress on that the collar came up kind of high and it was blowing in the breeze that was out there. Now, mind you, this was early, early, early spring, and I believe it was like in April. And so it was still kind of brown outside. There wasn't a lot of green yet or anything. It really stuck in my my 
mind and I kind of felt bad for her because her dress looked weathered and kind of tattered and frayed on the ends. Um, it was looked like it was probably one of the only dresses that she had um, and she looked very windblown and kind of tired like you know probably a lot of people that came across you know America out west that just seemed weathered and windblown probably leading a hard life and I don't know you know she looked relatively young I would say under 40 I came back in the house and and into this woman's front room to to sit down and have a chat with her about everything that I had seen there today or that day um I was sitting on the couch and um behind her there was a solid white wall and you know she didn't have a ton of furniture and stuff so that left kind of a an extra opening of just an empty wall that was, you know, off to the side of the couch. And what I could see was behind her in, in that, in that moment was silhouettes of all these people. And they were just moving, you know, kind of in the wall. I don't know how else to explain it. Maybe like if you've ever played shadow puppets on your wall or something and that's kind of what it looked like, except for they weren't dark figures at all. They were, it was, even though it was a white wall, everything looked very, or all the people looked very translucent white. So brighter than the white wall, if that makes sense. So, but I could see them moving and even one person seemed to kind of step out and kept walking. I don't know how many of you believe in, in portals or that people could have it opened up or it's just a place that the dead can kind of move freely between this world and that world. Every once in a while it does happen. And that's kind of what I got from this apartment complex. And I, and I don't even know that it's so much that it was a vortex that may have been opened up as much as all of this stuff and people had been on this land and um, they built an apartment complex on top of this very active area. And so then, pretty much, it's just kind of saturated and up and in, you know, within the walls and the buildings. And, and so the people are just there. She didn't ever experience anything bad there. I didn't experience anything horrible bad. I was not fond of... <laughs> you know, having my face caressed by one of the men, but I don't think that it was necessarily malicious. After um, I left that woman's home, I decided that I was so curious about all of the things that I had seen and, and the large amount of paranormal activity that was going on there. I decided to go to the library and see what I could find on that area. So arrived at the library and went into their Idaho room, which has a ton of information on your local little towns and stuff. And I looked up Ammon, Idaho, and I was really surprised at what I found. Tons of history that families had written down and made into little books of their own and stuff, but it was just a wealth of information. What I found out was that, of course, we had all the pioneers that came through and obviously settled around here. One of the main people who settled this area was a man with the last name of Empey. And they owned a large section of land out in that area where this apartment complex was. Now, mind you, there was also, you know, smaller um, plots of land that were owned by other people that didn't have as much. But the large majority in that area was owned by a man named Empey.
one year they had the flu, the big flu pandemic of 1918. And a lot of people passed away. As I mentioned in the last video, um, a lot of people tried to make it to the foothills, which surrounds Idle Falls and Ammon and many of the, the smaller rural areas around here. Um, they tried to flee there and self-isolate and quarantine there to, to get away from the pandemic and hopefully, you know, be safe for the winter. Well, it didn't always happen that way because they found out later that they had taken the virus with them and then ended up getting sick and then trying to make it back into Ammon or Idaho Falls and they didn't always make it. So when somebody was sick, um, I and, and this is probably, it's horrible to think because they, what they would do was if somebody was really taking a turn for the worst and they did worse and they didn't know whether or not they were going to survive, they would dig their grave so that if and when they passed away, they would just, uh, the family members would, I mean, they would just literally scoop the blankets up with the body in the blankets wrapped up and haul them out quickly out to that pre-dug hole and bury them because they needed that virus and that sickness out of the house and they needed you know them in the ground so it didn't continue to spread and of course couldn't bring people over and there was no viewings and and all of those things so it was a really sad time and a lot of people got buried even more so on the property that people owned at the time Well, eventually there came a time when there was a lot of rain and there was flooding. That flooding really created an issue with, you know, things coming up and, and they needed to do something about it. Which brings me back to the Empies. And they decided that they were going to donate a large plot of land that kind of sat up on a hill. And the cemetery sits just down the street. So it's like the apartment complex, further down the road. Empies still own land and property and a business there. And further on down the road, then there is the cemetery. So it's all, you know, in succession there. And the cemetery is still in use. There is a folklore around here about a little girl that sits in the trees in the Ammon Cemetery. And people talk about if you drive up along that road that runs alongside that cemetery, people claim to have seen her. And she sits in the trees and she waves. They say some, some of the folklore that I was looking at said, it was a little girl. Some people say they're not really sure if they could tell if it was a boy or a girl. So. Anyway, I will talk to you later. Thanks for coming back and I hope to see you guys again. See ya. So side note, a uh, little PS right here. I'm not suggesting or recommending anybody run around over at uh, the Ammon Cemetery. The people that are there, are, they're real people and they're not props for scary Halloween stuff. Have some common courtesy and respect for the dead and don't just don't make the cemeteries your playground. That's all I'm saying is. So anyway, have a good day. Peace.